Hello, and thank you for clicking on the video, and welcome to Open Source Hardware for the Masses. So, I am Ray, I'll be your presenter. Some people call me Shakemo, you all can just call me Ray. Anyways, so let's uh, start moving forward with the presentation. So, let me start telling you a little bit about myself. Um, so, I'm a senior infrastructure engineer of the 777th degree. If you get that joke, you and I are already friends and you have great taste in movies. Um, I have a bachelor's degree from a meaningless university because it's just a piece of paper that just proved I did something. A uh, master's degree from Hard Knocks University because we all know how life can be. And a PhD in yak shaving. Uh, usually this is the part of the presentation where I ask if anybody gets that joke. Um, but uh, this year, uh, no, I don't think we'll do that uh, since it's virtual. So uh, for those of you who got it, well done. For those of you who didn't, it's okay. You're probably not quite as old as I am. Anyways, moving right along. Let's dive into mobile phones. So when we think of mobile phones, um, there's lots of ways to think about mobile phones. Um, originally, it was a device meant to actually place calls. There's an idea. I know that sounds silly in the time of smartphones and things of the like, but Originally, that was the whole point. And, you know, if they made calls and made calls well, um, it was a great device. Kind of fantastic, right? Um, that was kind of the idea originally. Um, and, you know, you could send basic text messages, which were super duper simple and basic. Um, things like T9 Word, which um, a lot of younger people might not even know what that is these days, but uh, it was the idea of pressing the buttons on your keypad um, a certain number of times to get letters. So when you think about that in the world of um, soft, you know, touch keyboards on smartphones, or even when we had uh, hardware-based keyboards, that's kind of a different world, right? I mean, that's kind of shockingly different compared to what we're used to today uh, in today's worlds uh, of mobile phones and smartphones and things of the like. So I wanted to invite you guys to take a trip back um, to when Android was just kind of being birthed, kind of just becoming a thing. So the first US-based Android phone that I could find relatively easily, um, and I'm pretty sure this is accurate at this point, was the uh, G1. Um, and I said the T-Mobile G1 um, for kind of sort of obvious reasons, but um, more or less, that was one of the major carriers at the time that had it. Matter of fact, it might have been the only carrier for a while, albeit I know it ended up on quite a few other carriers. Um, but that was released back in October of 2008, which if you think about that, that's, oh, what? I'm terrible at math, but that's 11-ish years ago now. Um, but this was kind of the first production release of a Android smartphone-ish device. Um, you'll notice it had actual physical buttons. There's an idea. Uh, there's a lot of people that wish we would go back to physical buttons uh, or really miss them. Um, uh, there were many people I grew up with that basically said physical keyboards will never die because they will never, you'll never be able to make a soft touch keyboard that feels like a physical keyboard, which um, they're not necessarily wrong, um, honestly. But the other thing you'll notice too is, is the actual size of this. So the size of this device was meant so that you could grip it from each side and use your thumbs and get to pretty much everything. Again, back then phones were small enough that you could actually do that properly. So if you think about it, um, that's also something interesting uh, that no longer is kind of a thing, really, uh, for the most part. Um, you know, I mean, at the time there was what? There was Blackberry, there was iPhone, there was this, but the only other physical keyboard really out there was um, on Blackberries, which, albeit, you know, some people complain that they were incredibly small. I myself have ridiculous sausage fingers, but even I loved a Blackberry Curve back in the day, whenever I was just starting out um, as a fledgling nerd and geek in the professional world, and that was kind of interesting. Um, there are days when I still miss the trackball on that, um, and you'll notice there's a trackball on that interface as well. Trackballs were kind of awesome uh, going through email, um, if you think about it. So, uh, as you can see, I'm not going to read all of the tech specs at you guys because that would be absolutely ludicrous. 
but let's just touch on a few of them, right? So obviously, since this is 11-ish years ago, um, the display is ridiculously small. Uh, the CPU is insanely underpowered by today's standards. Uh, it had 192 meg bytes of RAM, not gig, meg bytes of RAM, right? 256 gig ROM, which was basically just, you know, <clears throat> more or less the internal storage. Uh, the OS, it was running Android 1.6. That was the donut version of Android back when they still named it Funny Pastry Things. Um, it only supported 3G because, frankly, I don't even think 4G was a thing back then. Um, the battery was uh, 1150 milliamp hours, but hey, it was removable. There's another item to touch on, right? <laughs> For a lot of us, we remember back when thing, batteries were removable. They were serviceable. They were replaceable. We didn't have to worry about oh no, my battery is not charging or it's taking forever. We could just rip it out, order a new one, slap it in, and we we're ready to rock and roll. Um, so if you took good care of your devices, you could have them for a really long time um, back then, which uh, I kind of miss, honestly. Um, camera was ridiculously low megapixels, which is to be expected. Shockingly had no uh, headphone jack. But I mean, again, this is kind of the dawn of Android, so that's not that shouldn't be too terribly shocking. Um, Bluetooth, just a really old version of it, sure. Um, you know, uh, it could support um, the B&G standards of Wi-Fi, sure, that makes sense. That's what was out around that time. It had GPS, and it had the mini USB, not micro, mini, like old school, like think BlackBerry, think the faddish connector. That was mini. Um, and it had a micro SD slot, which was cool because even back then you could still slap in more storage. Kind of awesome, right? Okay. So that kind of sets the tone a little bit, right? So that's where it all started. That was the that was the initial. That was like the alpha release, right? That was the initial release of Android in the United States. Okay, so keep that in mind. So let's move on to the Librem 5. So the Librem 5 is gonna be available in about six months, according to their website as of yesterday. Um, it's $749. Uh, the dimensions are not available on um, PURI.SM, so their website. Uh, the display is about 5.7 inches, so, um, you know, pretty decent. It's got a quad-core CPU. Um, it's got a decent GPU. It's got 3 gigs of RAM, which by comparison to the initial release we just talked about is astronomically large. Uh, 32 gig of internal storage, so that's great. Runs pure OS, which they've been uh, doing a lot of work with to mobile optimize using thing or building things like LibHandy and things of the like. And I'll touch on that a little bit later in the talk, but um, just doing some really great work that a lot of other projects and folks can leverage, which is great, right? Um, it's 4G LTE capable, obviously. Um, and there's a slew of international bands and all this other stuff on their website. I encourage you to look at it. Um, I didn't want to list them out here because I would need like 10 slides just for that. So uh, I encourage you to go to their website, take a look at if you are um, would be an international customer and are interested in this device, but a whole bunch, let's just say that. Um, I don't think anybody's going to have a bad day internationally around that. Battery is a pretty enormous size by comparison. So let's go back for a minute, right? So we go back. Battery here is 1150 milliamp hours. So 3,500 milliamp hours. That's kind of enormous by, uh, you know, those standards. So over three times larger, kind of awesome. Uh, rear camera is obviously 13 megapixels with LED flash. Yep, great. Um, this one has a front camera. Notice the last one did not have a front camera. The selfie cam did not exist in 2008, at least on this device. Uh, simpler times. Anyways, so uh, this does have a headphone jack, which uh, right now I know a lot of headphone jacks are running away screaming uh, from devices. So uh, personally, that would be a really great thing for me myself. I would love to still have a headphone jack. Uh, Bluetooth current standard. Yep, makes sense. Well, excuse me, not current standard. Uh, it's four. It is. It is modern. I'll be nice. Um, because I know that, uh, I think, I believe we're currently on version five, I think, and we'll touch on that a little later, but anyways, so it's modern, it's not ancient, right? Um, it has dual band Wi-Fi, um, ABGN, great GPS, of course, um, it's got USB-C, but that USB-C has a bunch of other tricks, as you can see, which is kind of awesome, and of course it has a micro SD slot. So, 
One of the things to think about with Librem, and I know that people have very strong opinions on the topic of the Librem 5. Here's my take on this. My take on this is that they are a company that is trying to move forward um, and build things that will allow the rest of the open source community to be able to have a true, real Linux device. And I'm a huge fan of that. Now, there are some people who might have some issues with the way they've handled things or so how they've communicated things and this, that, and the other thing. Here's the thing. Let's just all stop, take a breath, and think about that for a minute. They are really, in a manner of speaking, uh, you know, doing the Lord's work here and trying to build a better tomorrow for mobile devices for all of us nerds. You know, uh, we might not love everything about how they're doing it or going about it or things that they've done, and we can nitpick them to death, but why wouldn't we just want to support them? Wouldn't we just want to be excellent to each other? Isn't that the whole theme of this virtual conference this year, being excellent to each other? Shouldn't we give them the benefit of the doubt? You know, I personally, the minute that they offer some type of financing solution, because um, it is $750, and let's face it, most devices today, flagship-wise, are that much. And I realize, and we'll get into that in a minute, that these specs, you know, are debatable. But again, this is the initial release of a Linux-based device. We need to keep that in mind, right? That's really, really, really important when we're talking about these types of things, right? So again, the minute that they offer a financing option, I'm gonna buy the living hell out of this thing. And it's gonna be awesome, I'm sure it will. Is it gonna be perfect? No, I'm confident it won't. Just like the initial release of almost anything isn't perfect but I'm confident that they're gonna iterate on that platform, and over time, it is gonna be absolutely fantastic. But as soon as I am able to support them in their adventure to bring Linux to more of a mainstream market over time, I'm absolutely gonna support that. Why wouldn't I? That's silly, right? Um, so anyways, that's kind of the Librem 5 in a nutshell. So let's move on just a little bit in our tour here. Let's go to the Pine Phone. Okay, so the Pine Phone, um, again, people have strong feelings about the Pine Phone, and I use this specific image for a reason. Um, I realize there's a community edition uh, of the UV ports device of the Pine Phone currently, and it's got a cool looking back and all this other neat stuff. But the reason I went with this particular image is I wanted to point out that this is really, really, really friendly to various projects to install on mobile devices. That's not to say that the Librem 5 isn't, but the Librem 5 has a very strong uh, sense of how things are going to move forward with a pure OS and things like that is not to say that you could not um, put some of these other projects on the Librem 5. I am just, again, that's kind of the state of the world today and that's fine. So uh, you'll notice immediately that the Pine phone is uh, exponentially less expensive uh, than the Librem 5. So for those who are much more economically minded like myself, um, obviously that immediately has my attention at that price point, right? Um, it's estimated to ship uh, in late May 2020, and those are those UbiPort community edition versions that I just described. So they will be shipping very soon. Whereas if we juxtapose that with Librem 5, uh, according to their website, again, it was a, in about six months. Uh, that's just the state of affairs. Just facts, folks. Anyways, you'll notice the display is a little bit different. Um, the CPU and GPU are a little bit different. Uh, RAM is not quite as much. Um, you know, the eMMC is not quite as big. Um, uh, again, that's why I mentioned UB ports, because that's the current OS that it is shipping with if you go to their site right now. And pre-order one of those. It is also 4G LTE capable. It also has a really awesome uh, removable battery. One of the cool things about um, this particular battery that um, I kind of ran out of a cool way to put it in here, um, it's actually based on a Samsung battery. Um, so the really neat thing is you can literally go online and just buy this battery that you would for the Samsung, I think it's a J7, 
shame on me for not putting this in here. But if you go to their site, it's, li it's literally listed that it's this type of like OEM battery. You can just buy it online. How cool is that? That's awesome. Not only is it removable, but it's already an existing component. It's something else. You can go buy it. How cool is that? I personally would love that. Um, so the front and rear camera are nothing to write home to mom about, but frankly, I don't think anybody's buying this device or this device for the next amazing, you know, Amazeballs camera. So really, that's not super shocking, but they're not awful either, really. I mean, they give you a camera, yay. Um, and uh, of course it has the, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, uh, same iteration of Bluetooth, so nothing super exciting there. Single band Wi-Fi, okay, but let's face it, everybody's got a 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi band in their house, most likely. Sure, okay, you can't do five speeds, but meh, eh, it'll come. I'm not worried about that. Uh, GPS, of course. USB-C, hey, fantastic, keeping with modern standards, love it. Um, and again, it can do some extra tricks, uh, which is also fantastic. Um, and it's got a micro SD slot, and it supports micro SDs up to two terabytes. That's just silly, so I'm probably going to do it when I eventually get a Pine phone. Um, it is also fair for me to point out that, unfortunately, at the time of filming this presentation, I have not had any hands-on with the Librem 5, and I have not had any hands-on with uh, the Pine phone. I look forward to testing the crap out of both of them whenever I can get my hands on some of those uh, more completed iterations. So if Pine Phone uh, and or, uh, you know, the Librem folks are listening to this or happen to watch this, um, I would absolutely love to, uh, you know, be sent a review model in a finished capacity that you would want reviewers to take a look at. Uh, so I welcome either of you to get in contact with me, and that would be absolutely fantastic. I'll mention how to do that towards the end of the presentation. Anyways, moving on. So, if we move forward here a bit. Okay, now, this is my current device that I actually have. I recently had to upgrade from my uh, venerable LG G5 because it was uh, having issues, and um, I needed to make sure I could reliably do silly things like it calls. But anyway, so this is $1,000. This was released um, roughly Mayish 2019, so it's not like the latest greatest, but eh, it's modern again. Um, again, this has an octa-core processor, six gigs of RAM, 120 gig ROM, Android 10. So notice this is Android 10. So we went from Android 1.6 to Android 10. So this is a very, very much more mature, um, far longer developed iteration uh, of Android, right? Um, it's 4G, 5G capable. Um, it does not have a removable battery. Boo, I wish it had a removable battery. Um, it has 11 bajillion cameras on the front and the back. Um, it's got a headphone jack, a newer version of Bluetooth. It goes all the way up to wireless AC and basically will we'll set the internet on fire, at least as much as a mobile device can. GPS, um, again, USB-C, all the, all the accoutrement, right? So, okay. So... You know, as we're going through all of this, right? Um, you know, those that's an enormous amount of specs, right? So I've been trying to give you guys a little bit more context and things around that as we're going through the presentation here. So, you know, understand that it's not fair, in my opinion, to measure this device, right, the Librem 5, or the Pine phone against this. Okay, this is something that's had, you know, 10 plus, 11 plus years of active development, right, in mating software to hardware, whereas these, right, um, absolutely have not, right? Which is the whole point I brought up this device. The whole reason of even putting this in this presentation is that it is a more fair comparison, notwithstanding the technologies that were popular and available at the time, right, to compare this to the Librem 5 and to the Pine phone. So when you think about it in that context, this device and this device are not that bad, 
But to compare this and this to an LG V50 is insane. It's not a apples to apples fair comparison. Now, admittedly, that doesn't change how the public feels about their phones, right? We are all very, very spoiled when it comes to um, all of the conveniences and features and things of the like on these devices. And same thing for Apple products and insert whatever else here, right? But the point is, is that um, we need to keep that in context, right? When we're talking about, say, a Pine phone or a Librem 5, right? So this and this are far more privacy respecting than this, right? Now, okay, so this is way more convenient today, but this will get there. That'll get there, right? It's just going to take some time. That's all it's going to take, time and effort. That's it, right? So just something to keep in mind when we're talking about things like this, that over time, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be fantastic, right? And the work they're doing at Librem, right, or Purism, rather, you know, is going to help the folks over at Pine and vice versa. That's what's really cool about both of these devices. The world is big enough for both of them to exist. And when you look at the market segment that both of these folks are trying to attack, granted, they're all techy nerdy people right now, right? Just like me and you. But that's a $750 device. That's a $150 device. Those are two extraordinarily different people that are going to buy those devices, most likely. I mean, or you might be nuts like me and buy them both. But the point is, you get where I'm going. Okay, so we talked a whole bunch about mobile devices. So let's move on from mobile devices, shall we? Let's take a look at a tablet. Um, so the Pine Tab. So this is made by the same uh, company that is making the Pine phone. And it comes in, well, it's going to come in two versions, right, with a keyboard uh, that's uh, magnetically attachable. It's optional. Uh, and that's 99 bucks. Without that, it's 79. Um, we don't have a firm date on that. Um, didn't have the dimensions on the site. I checked. Um, again, it has uh, some similar componentry um, to the Pine foam. Um, some things are a bit bigger. Some things are a bit smaller. Um, you know, uh, it's going to have microphones, speakers, a home button. You're going to be able to, you know, use it with modern, you know, Wi-Fi and all that other good stuff. So this is really cool. I, and the reason this is really cool is because um, I can't wait to have a Linux tablet in the house, right? Because um, it's a really interesting form factor by comparison to a mobile phone. And while um, there are certain things that would bum me out that a mobile phone might not be able to do for me, um, you know, on a tablet, I would probably be, probably be less unhappy about. Um, not to mention it's a larger screen, and you can just theoretically do a bit more with it. It's an interesting spot between a full laptop and a mobile device. Even though they mentioned, you know, there's a keyboard and all this other stuff, and it could do some light laptoping and uh, things of the like. But again, um, I just think this is really great, really awesome. And again, I suspect that Pine is going to leverage a whole bunch of the same um, software and componentry, as you can see in this list, and it's evidence that they are, um, from the Pine phone. And that's awesome, right? And it's very, very similar to kind of um, how the Librem 5, or rather the Purism team, worked with the Librem 5 as far as starting with a laptop and, and going kind of the mobile direction. That's very, very similar to what the Pine folks did, right? So again, the world is big enough to have two awesome manufacturers of Linux-based hardware. It's going to be great. Right, and the more the, the the more folks out there there are like this, the better the prices are probably going to be. Right over time, competition is good. Right, we saw that from AMD over the last couple of years. Right, competition is great for us as the consumer, and that gets me really excited. It's fantastic. Right, okay. So I think we talked enough about the Pine Tab as much as I love it. Let's talk about smartwatches. Right. So the Pine folks are also making a watch. Now, right now, there's only a dev kit. Let's make that really, really clear. Please don't go to their website and assume that you're going to get um, some, you know, Apple Watch that runs Linux. That's not quite a thing yet, just saying. Now, 
you know, uh, like I said, right now they're dev kits, you basically have to build them, and I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who would love to build them. But notice, it's only 25 bucks. Knowing the Pine folks and how they've done things in the past, it's probably not gonna be a whole lot more whenever this is ready for prime time, and that's awesome, right? Again, the, the release date is to be determined and things alike, but it's coming, right? You have all week on 180 milliamp hour battery, that's cool. I mean, that's fantastic, right? Um, there's not an enormous amount of storage, but look at how tiny it is. It's adorable. Of course, there's not a ton of storage. Um, you know, Bluetooth 5. Hey, it's even got a newer Bluetooth standard. That's awesome. And Bluetooth Low Energy. That, again, makes total sense. Um, you know, it's going to be compatible with everything. Huh. It doesn't matter if you have an Apple device or an Android device or, you know, most likely a Pine phone. Um, health tracking. You know, step counting, heart rate detection, all this stuff's really cool. These are some big deal features, right? And what's effectively going to be an open source um, Linux powered smartwatch. I can't wait to buy one of these. You know, insert shut up and take my money here meme, right? I mean, that will, that's gonna be awesome. So I can't wait to be wearing one of those. You know, and someone asked me, ooh, what's that? Is that an Apple watch? No, actually it's a Pine Pine. It's even better, and here's why. Uh, for a lot of reasons, in my opinion, at least. So, okay. So we talked about some more watches a little bit. It's kind of fantastic. So let's move on to desktops. So I would be remiss if I didn't have a, a System76 slide in here. That is the Thelio, Thelio Major, and Thelio Massive. And they are freaking awesome and adorable. And I love them, and I covet them, and I want one. Um, they have freaking wood on a desktop. That's just cool. I'm sorry. Like, that just is kind of awesome to me. So, um, you know, uh, this was a, a happening that's happened over the past year or so, and this is fantastic. Um, so, in addition to some of those things, um, let's dive into some of the just high-level specs. Again, I'm not going to go through all of these specs, but um, you can basically get as absolutely insane as you want with this device, and it's going to handle it. All the way up to 86 terabytes of storage, that's just silly and awesome, right? Four GPUs, you know, uh, running a bunch of uh, AI or TensorFlow-based workflows like dual Xeon CPUs. It's a freaking tiny server. It's awesome. Now, you're going to pay for it, but it's awesome. It's fantastic. Um, and on top of it being fantastic and awesome, did I mention it comes in colors? Yes, you can friggin' color coordinate your desktop with your setup. That is just amazing and just makes it even more exciting, right? Okay, so there's those colors, that colors. That blue is even growing on me. I actually talked with Carl on Twitter a little bit about this, and I was just like, eh, I wish the blue was a little darker and this and the other thing. I'm being really needy, by the way, right now. But if they end up with, with uh, additional options in the future or even different types of blue, but that blue, I don't know. It's starting to grow on me. I, I really might have to get one because it's just freaking awesome. But okay, so we've gushed about the Thelios. I gotta touch on them a little bit because they're just awesome. Um, and the, the amount of work that they're doing with putting as much of the information as they can about Thelios online for you to be able to repair components or print your own stuff or build your own stuff if things want awry or, or needs repair to replace is just absolutely fantastic. And I, and I would be doing them a disservice if I didn't at least touch on that, um, you know, going through these topics. Laptops. So System76 uh, Lima Pro is kind of awesome. It starts at 1099 and there's like 14 hours of battery life, which is just the silliest amount of battery life I've ever seen on any Linux powered device ever, full stop. Um, and you can just pack tons of RAM in there, whatever. I feel like this is almost the ultimate commuter general all-purpose laptop. I mean, you're not necessarily going to game on the thing, but you can do some light gaming because it's got Intel graphics, but this is just silliness. Like, it's so good. And it's even got open firmware with Core Boot that they've been working on for a while. So hats off to uh, Jeremy Stoller and the engineering team at System76 for doing that. And they're constantly moving things forward um, with similar initiatives like what they did with that firmware. I can't wait to see what they do next, honestly. So again, lots and lots of specs. I am not going to read them all at you.
But uh, one thing I will call out is um, how ridiculously light it is, 2.2 pounds. And it is also USB Type-C charging compatible. So you can have a USB Type-C charger. If it can put out 65 watts, which the spec on USB-C is 100 watts, so it shouldn't be that hard to find, you could freaking charge this over USB-C. And if you have a monitor that supports like USB-C power delivery, you can plug this into a monitor and freaking charge your laptop. That is awesome. We're getting closer and closer to what I continue to bug them about, which is a one cable solution um, for these devices for docking and things of the like. I can't wait until we get to a point someday when we have a USB-C docking solution that's one cable that can power an Oryx Pro. Now that's a lot bigger and taller of an order and it's gonna be tougher to do, but I can't wait till we get there because that's just gonna be silliness and amazing. Did I mention that it goes completely flat? I'm sure you caught that in that picture with how long I've been talking by now, but it goes completely friggin' flat. That's kind of awesome. Uh, also note, uh, it doesn't have a numpad, which is making a lot of people really excited and a lot of other people really not excited. Me personally, super excited. Absolutely love that. Um, in the future, I hope that uh, it'll be something potentially that uh, you'll be able to pick an option like that if you wish. Um, you know, does it have a numpad? Does it not? I hope in the future. I, this is me just nerding out at System76 over the internet right now. But anyways, we'll see. I, uh, I look forward to it. Okay, so what else we got here? Uh, so I mentioned the Oryx Pro. So I have a Gen 3 Oryx Pro, and I think they're up to like Gen 5 now. Um, and uh, I mean, the Oryx Pro is just silly. As far as I'm concerned, if you want a gaming and or creator-based laptop, this is the one to get, personally. I, I think so. Um, it's just absolutely fantastic. Every iteration gets sexier and more awesome and thinner and great. Um, I have nothing but good things to say about this. Um, if anybody's paying attention, uh, on their website, they do have Pop! OS 2004 LTS listed as an installable option uh, if you order this or the uh, Lemur Pro. So for those of you paying attention and asking questions, I literally just saw some today as I, I'm recording this. Um, is uh, Pop! OS 2004 coming out soon? Well, if they updated the website, I sure bet it is. So, that battery life is my guesstimate based on my Oryx Pro 3. So, please take that with a grain of salt. Um, so, System76, if you have more updated information that you can put on your website, um, I will happily uh, add an amendment to this presentation. Uh, what else? So, you can throw all the way up to a uh, RTX 2080 in this. That's just silly. Um, tons and tons of RAM. Um, they, they have high refresh, uh, you know, displays in the device now, which is amazing. So think about, you know, Doom Eternal at 144 hertz. Uh, yes, please. So, you know, tons and tons of storage, gigabit Ethernet, Bluetooth 5. I could go on. But again, notice that charger is 180 watts. So remember a minute ago when I said USB-C only goes to 100 watts? Yeah, that's where that gets challenging for uh, what I'm nerding out about in the future. But anyways, uh, super cool laptop. Um, that's what I'm actually recording this presentation on right now. And um, I absolutely love it. Um, in the future, I hope they give me an option for a numpadless um, keyboard. But again, I'm just being nerdy and slightly annoying to them. So I apologize if I'm annoying you guys, but you do such cool stuff. Um, I got to just give you more ideas to mess around with stuff. Okay, so what else do we got here? Ah, yes, the Pinebook Pro. Um, so I mentioned some, you know, uh, much more flagship, you know, higher-end devices. I got to go to the other end, too, right? I mean, you know, occasionally you just need something that, you know, isn't completely nuts, but, man, it's exactly fits this niche or need, right? Um, I think of this as like a Chrome OS competitor, um, is, is the way I think about this device. Shipping with Manjaro KDE Edition, um... You know, again, they're using a lot of the a sim similar components that we already discussed in some of the other mobile devices. Um, note that this one has Bluetooth 5. It goes all the way up to wireless AC. Awesome. It has a 1080p webcam because we all know most webcams suck. But um, that's kind of awesome, personally, I think. It's got a bunch of privacy switches, just like the Librem 5 in the internal-based uh you know, dip switches that the Pine phone has because all three of those devices do have privacy switches and it is important to call out and I will get probably lambasted if I don't mention that. Um, 
So it has a bootable micro SD and a bunch of really cool modern ports, including USB-C. That's fantastic. Um, again, you know, if you need something for, for the kids for a first laptop or a Chrome OS alternative type device, I'd say buy one of these because these are friggin' awesome. Um, you know, again, you're probably not going to be downloading, you know, uh, a library on the thing, but, you know, or doing, uh, you know, TensorFlow AI work. But technically you could, even though you'd be nuts, which, I mean, I'd probably just do it to say I did it, but I bet you it'll run Doom. Anyways, moving on. Okay, so more cool things. So I literally, right before I recorded this, I saw that Lenovo is going to begin shipping Fedora Workstation 32. Like, that's just insane and awesome to me. So I'm throwing this in there because more and more manufacturers seem to be shipping pre-installed with Linux. Um, I know Dell's been doing it with Ubuntu for a long time. Um, again, we have companies like Tuxedo. We have System76. We have, um, you know, Pine. We have... Uh, a myriad of companies, and I'm sure there's more I didn't list and someone's going to get grumpy with me, and that's fine. But the point is, more and more and more, people are either pre-shipping with uh, Linux installed, uh, or um, they're offering that as an option, which is super important, right? Linux is starting to become mainstream, right? It's not just for, you know, nerds and geeks like you and I. It's it's becoming a, a valid alternative for everyone else. And that's kind of amazing, right? If you think about where we all started. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. And for the record, um, in Fedora Magazine, that's uh, actually from uh, Matthew, the uh, Fedora project leader. So that's coming directly from like the head of Fedora, just so you know. So it's not fake news or anything crazy. It's, that's real. Um, you know, System76 is gonna be making everything in house. Um, so there's a uh, slightly more dated uh, blog that Carl penned himself, um, and there's also a recent one from Jason Evangelo um, that's uh, far more updated that just confirms that, you know, getting January 2020, it's going to start being a thing, right? Um, now, that doesn't mean you can go to their website, right, um, and necessarily go buy one, but they're working on it, which is awesome, and I cannot wait to see what they're going to do. Um, something I didn't put in here, they're also... Uh, working on uh, an open source keyboard, which also looks really cool. And shame on me for not putting that in here, but that's just, again, System76 is doing some of the most awesome cutting edge stuff. And I just cannot wait to see what comes out of their, their, their factory next. Um, and, you know, originally when um, I was going to write this presentation, I was gonna go into a bunch of recommendations and things of the like for, you know, if it was, you know, if Ray was at the helm of System76, you know, how would I tackle if I had all of this, this cool factory that I could make all of these awesome laptops in, how would I tackle it? And, you know, what are some of the different lines of laptops that I would make? Like, you know, uh, a Road Warrior one that has LTE, that has silly battery life, that, you know, everybody who's doing productivity stuff uh, in office work would love you know, uh, a gaming line, a desktop line, just, you know, a, a professional higher end line that can do like, you know, um, some serious uh, AI work and or, um, you know, have 11 bajillion dockers running on it or, you know, insert thing here. But then I realized uh, over time that, um, and I actually contributed to this page as well, even though you can't see me in the screenshot, but there were 129 issues, which I think it was actually 131 um, because they closed two there. But um, uh, basically suggestions in a GitHub repo that they openly asked for. They were like, hey guys, you know, this is us coming to you, the community, and basically saying, what do you guys want to see in cool laptops that we're going to make, right? And I know they're active and they actively reviewed this and looked at this and they're probably still looking at it. Um, because I've actually seen updates and context around it. So they didn't just do this to say, yeah, we went to the community and they said stuff. No, they're actively reviewing this and seem to genuinely care, right, about what we have to say. And I'll bet there's probably a few things in here that everybody probably didn't even consider. And you know what? That's why this is awesome, right? So instead of me standing here uh, <clears throat> digitally, even though you can't see me right now, 
uh, you know, giving this presentation and you know, prattling on about all the things I would do, they did me one better. They actually went out and said, "Tell you what, everybody, tell us what you want, right?" And we will, and we will integrate as much as we can. And over time, I'll bet you there's going to be a lot of those things. And I'm sure there's a bunch of those things they can't do initially. But as they continue to iterate and make things and generate different lines and stuff like that, I'll bet you the vast majority of this over the next several years end up in production-ready devices. And I cannot wait to see what comes out of there because, oh man, there's some really cool things I, I think these guys might be able to do. And yeah, I, I can't wait to be first in line with my hand up saying, yes, please, I will buy that. Um, so... Anyways, uh, just a heads up on, on on all the cool stuff that System76 is doing. And again, I don't want everyone to think that I'm just a System76 fanboy or anything like that. They just happen to be one of the primary manufacturers doing some genuinely awesome stuff that everybody else isn't, right? Which is why I'm highlighting them so prominently in you know the, this whole talk, right? So... And I swear I saw somewhere, and Daniel uh, Ferre and Cassidy Blade, please keep me honest here. I know you guys occasionally see stuff that I do, so if I got this wrong, please yell at me. Um, and I will happily uh, put an amendment, uh, wherever that's, uh, you know, however this gets posted, um, and things of the like, or a correction. But I swear I saw somewhere that Daniel was working on stuff in elementary OS, which Daniel and Cassidy are kind of like, uh, two of the driving forces behind elementary OS, for those of you not familiar with them. Um, I swear that they were leveraging libhandy or at least something around that to make um, improved touch responsiveness and design in elementary OS, and they were doing lots of cool stuff with it. Um, that's why I put the sources in my head, because I couldn't find it anywhere uh, before I actually recorded this. But guys, keep me honest here. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I swear they're doing that. And to me... That's awesome. Which Live Handy, for those of you who don't know, is one of the libraries that came out of uh, the Purism camp, your Pure OS, in the Librem 5. And that goes full circle back to what I was saying earlier, which is um, it is awesome that all of these companies working on Linux and Linux hardware and componentry and software can interact collaboratively and build on the hard work and stand on the shoulders of each other to make something even better, right? That's what makes this so cool and why I can't wait to see what the next three to five years brings um, because I think it's going to be a really cool place to be um, at that time for open source Linux and, and, and everything thereabouts. Really, I do. So... Now, normally I would ask if there are any questions, but obviously that can't really be a thing. Um, but if you go to discuss.lfnw.org, um, there's a forum there. You can post questions um, to any of the presenters, I believe. Um, James, if that's not what the original intent was, oops, well, now everybody knows that exists. I'm kidding, guys. So please check that out. Um, I'm also going to likely, uh, this is likely gonna be posted in a playlist. Um, for Linux Fest Northwest. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to me. My email is ray at shikmo, S-H-I-C-K-M-O dot I-O, right? So ray at shikmo dot I-O. Um, and if you don't want to get me there, you can get me on Twitter at shikmo7. It's the exact same spelling with the number seven. Um, and you can beat me up there. That's usually, those are some of the biggest places that I'll be. Um, I am in the Linux Fest Northwest forum, so if you post questions there and at me, uh, yeah, I believe you can just either at Chickmo or at Ray. I will see it. Uh, I am the only one there, I believe. But uh, guys, this has been a ton of fun, and I know this isn't the format that anybody thought that this was going to take this year, but uh, hopefully that was helpful to you. Hopefully you got something out of that presentation. And uh, no matter what, I look forward to... Uh, seeing you all talking to you all either in the comments and the like and otherwise i will see you guys next year hopefully in person and uh maybe we can all grab a bite all right guys thank you so much for listening for your time and attention and i hope you have a fantastic weekend talk to you all soon